Hey, it's Dry Bear. We're continuing our series of covering every weapon in Wild Hearts, and today we're going to be talking about the cannon or the hand cannon as it's known in game. We'll go over all the mechanics of the weapon, how to use it, and some combos and utilizations that will help you conquer any hunt, and we'll cover everything in between. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. Subscribe for more gaming content, and as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear come by and say hi. The cannon is the other ranged weapon aside from the bow in the game, and it hits like an absolute truck. It's relatively slow and does require some setup and planning as you're thinking through the process of utilizing it, but if you're paying attention and activating your mind when you're using it, you can get some serious damage, and it's super fun to launch the meme beam laser onto the target, especially if you can hit the weak point or a punish point for the entirety of the beam. As a quick reminder, if you ever want to test out weapons, you can come up to any of these training bears. There is one inside of Minato here on the bottom right. There's one inside the first zone, the spring zone near the first spawn point. And of course, you can use your Dragon Kurakuri to spawn one wherever you want in the world to test out whatever you want. Come up to the dragon bears. They will have a train pop up, activate this and turn on attack tutorials. This will give you a walkthrough of all the abilities in, of, for a weapon. So if you're switching a weapon, even if you're not using cannon, you can test whatever you want uh, in order to activate that. So let's go over the basic function of the cannon. There's only a couple abilities that you have to be aware of and utilizing them it comes with mastering the weapon. It is a ranged weapon, so you have to unsheathe it, bring it out, and then you get a crosshair and your R2, which is your special activation, I'm going to use PS4 controls, so I'm using a PS4 controller on PC right now, but it's going to be your special. So we'll call it attack one, which is square or X. Attack two is Y or triangle, and then R2 or RT is going to be your special. So that's going to be your fire button. So you activate fire and you will shoot a single shot. This deals damage, but in normal use, you will be holding down the trigger and kind of moving around. So you'll be firing shots. Uh, you can hit weak points this way. It does a, a decent amount of damage and you kind of be working through that way. Uh, you will need to know about all of the meters and UI information that you have in the bottom left corner of the screen here. So let's talk about those. The first is going to be the blue bar that you have. You'll notice that as you fire your cannon, the blue bar on, in the middle starts to go down. So while this blue bar is active, you will fire normally and deal normal, normal damage. When it empties out like this, you'll notice that you'll fire much slower and the damage that you deal will be significantly lower. So we're at 136 right now. When it ends, it fires, it does about less than half and it fires really slowly. So your first goal in playing the cannon is to maintain high, higher than zero on that blue bar. And you do that by standing inside of a key deployment. On PS4, you do this with square. You'll activate and it'll drop a key deployment right under your feet. If yours isn't as big as mine, uh, it's okay. I have gear on that extends the range of this, the radius of this. The default size is, is about half the size of this. So you just need to stand inside of this and in this area, you'll slowly regenerate that blue energy. So if I drain a little bit here, you'll see that blue bar going down. When I walk over and stand inside the key deployment, it fills back up again. So you need to be using these, placing these down and being aware of where they are because you do not want to run out of your blue energy at any point. Now you'll notice that there are five markers next to the blue bar and they look just like your key base, your key deployment here. And that's because at this current build, I only have five available to place out. So I can't go around and place an infinite number of these. I have a limited number. And so I have to use these very wisely and spread them out over the field. And if you ever get to a point where you have all of them deployed and you're really worried that you can't, you have to move positions or something like that, you can actually collect all of them instantly, no matter where they are on the map. Maybe they're in a, a completely other side of the map by holding your RT or R2 and then hitting square. This will pull back all of your key bases back into your weapon and you'll have them back available again. So then you can just place them down at your feet, regenerate your bar and you're back to firing. Now your other option for deploying the key base is at range. You can hold your R2 or RT and then hit triangle and it'll go into this mortar mode. This will fire a key base at your target. It will deal damage on impact, which is nice. So you'll be able to hit a target there. It does a sizable amount of damage even at base then that key base that you fired will bounce off and land down on the ground. 
and you can just easily go stand in it and regenerate or collect it if you need to. And that's kind of the core basis of the gameplay. The next layer on this is going to be your heat gauge. As you continually fire, you'll notice the meter above my energy is filling up, and that's the heat level of my weapon. If at any point you reach full heat, your weapon will overheat and it'll lock itself out for a while and becomes useless. So right there, you see I fired too long, it overheats. If I try to shoot, it does half damage, it's really slow, and I cannot rebuild energy. Even if I'm standing inside of a key field or a key base, it won't re refill my energy until the overheat has finished. So you want to be able to fire as much as you can, deal as much damage as you can without hitting the overheat. But it's important that you are filling the heat gauge because that goes into the next part of the weapon, and that is being able to charge your laser. So as you fill up your heat gauge, your weapon will eventually start to glow red. And before you overheat, you'll see it kind of shooting out the back there. It glows red and going, going to an orange level. If you have enough heat and then you fire a mortar and it hits the monster, it'll bounce off and develop a special zone that you can then use to charge your, your cannon. So if it hits the target, it'll do a boatload of damage. And then you can see how when it lands, this one is red. It's filled with red crimson energy. It is much different than the other ones over here. We can run over and we can place a new one just so we can see them separate. So this is the normal key base, the, the, the key deployment area. And that's the one that's been charged with heat and then it strikes the enemy. Note that if you have heat and you fire the, the key base and it doesn't strike the kimono, it will not bounce off and generate this field. You will have to strike the target in order to get that benefit. And all you gotta do is walk up to one of these red fields, stand inside of it, and then uh, hold your R2 or RT, and then hit triangle. And instead of doing a mortar shot, it'll suck the red energy out of the field, and now uh, your weapon is charged up and glowing. While you're in this state, you can sheathe and move around, but your weapon is still fully charged. And while you're in this state, you can then activate your bazooka mode. You do this by bringing your weapon out, holding this, it's the same keybinds that you used to suck the energy up into your weapon, which is gonna be your R2 into triangle or RT into Y. When you hold those together and you activate those, you'll then go into your bazooka mode with it over your shoulder. You won't be able to move and you'll be stuck in this little turret mode. But when you fire, you wanna hold down the trigger, it'll shoot a laser beam and then at the end of the charge, it will do a big explosion for damage. So you get this huge blast that does insane damage output, and then you'll drop charge again. At the end of it, you will be at zero energy, so you want to immediately go into a key base, get your energy back up. It will drop your heat level as well, so you'll be able to kind of cover that. Uh, and that's kind of the core rotation of using the cannon, is putting down a key base to keep your energy high, keeping high uptime of firing consistently. You want to be able to fire as as constantly as you can because this damage is just ongoing you'll be able to just pummel the target doing tons and tons of damage make sure you never overheat uh, so that you don't lock your own weapon out and then be able to hit the target uh it's hard with the bear because he's so small but you hit the target it'll bounce off you'll get your red on the ground walk up to it right trigger or r2 into triangle and activate the charge go into bazooka form and blast them all away doing huge damage. And that's the rotation. You're just kind of doing that. You're not always gonna be able to do the laser beam. You're not always gonna be able to catch it and charge it up depending on whether you're solo or in group. Cannon tends to feel a lot better in group in my opinion because you have less focus on you so you can kind of go and do the, the challenges that go into that. You also do have your uh, Karakuri combos, the most common of which is gonna be your spring and your box. In my experience, I have found that the box is rather useless for the cannon. It's incredibly useful for every other weapon in the game. But when you jump and fire, it will do this shot that does moderate damage. It's pretty respectable. The reason I don't run the box very much on the cannon, uh, the jump kind of jump execute, is because when you fire it, it dumps all your heat, which means that you're not able to use your cannon shot to get it. So if I jump here and I fire, You'll see that it does do more damage, but it pulls all the heat out of the weapon. And so you won't be able to do that laser charge up build. Now, what you could do if you wanted is just build up a bunch of heat and just only do the jump execute to get rid of it rather than doing the mortar shot or try to charge up the laser. And I'm sure there's going to be some math equation that equates whether which one is more viable than the other. 
for pure damage output. I'm guessing the laser is more damage output uh, if you can do it consistently without being interrupted. Now with the springboard, that is far more useful because when you spring forward and then you fire, you'll fire a whole bunch of regular shots and each one of them will give you heat generation. So this is a really easy way to, while you're in combat, dash forward, land on the target and you can fill, you can see I'm already after two of those, my weapon is already glowing red, then I can go straight into mortar, I can fire, and then I can hit the target and get an extra bonus out of it, which is super nice. So it's a very easy way to build up heat on your weapon. There's also tons of traits that allow you to build the cannon up in some really meaningful ways. But uh, outside of that, you're just kind of rotating through. And the trick with the cannon is just setting up the right opportunities. In this case, I would recommend using things like the harpoon, uh, so that way, when you put the harpoon down, you'll lock them in place. You can also use the uh, chain trap to lock them in place. Using bulwarks to knock them on the ground and then being on top of them is super nice. And you can even put up the bulwark and stand behind it, which is also super useful. You can kind of edge the side here, kind of side strafe or even shoot through it sometimes to get some extra damage on the target. And then when they come towards, if they charge at it with any kind of special charge, They'll bounce off, land on the ground, you can jump off, and you can finish them off and do some damage there. But you are trying to manage that. Now, the one thing that I'll, I'll add to this as well is it is quite challenging to manage the stamina for cannon. If you're just kind of firing and dealing damage, uh, especially at some of the master or faster kimonos that come at you quick, you're going to be dodging to the side a lot while you're firing and kind of rotating through, and then you'll run low on stamina. Sometimes you will have to reposition. You'll be in a bad spot at your slow movement speed. You won't be able to get the kimono to <laughs> miss you in any way. You're in doomed in a doomed situation. So you'll have to sheath your weapon, which is pretty quick. And then you'll have to move, run, dash, get out of the way, pull your weapon back out and start firing. Keep in mind that if you sheath your weapon, after a few seconds, your heat meter will start going down. So if you're trying to maintain a certain amount of heat, uh, in order to keep it up, and then you have to sheath your weapon to run away from a target or get away from a big attack. Just keep in mind that after a few seconds, if you don't re-engage and hit the target and get back into combat, then you will lose your heat, which means you won't be able to go through your core rotation, unless you're going for the uh, the box strat that we talked about, where you can just kind of, uh, which I haven't tested too much, to be honest. It does do increased damage. It can be really nice, uh, but it is a, a little bit, uh, it's just different from the core gameplay. So there you go. Um, that is the cannon. Uh, it is a, a straightforward weapon to learn. The hardest part of it is positioning, managing your stamina, getting inside these key bases, getting them up and utilizing them. I would recommend getting weapons and traits that have uh, increase in the radius of this. It makes it a lot easier to uh, find spots to drain the energy from it. It also makes it easier to kind of move around and stay safe while you're filling up your energy. But from that, it is just... That's just it, man. It's a super satisfying weapon, especially when you get a really nice laser beam on a target on a weak point too, and you can get some big crit damage on that as well. I've seen some huge numbers on my cannon uh, on targets that just get in my way. So there you go. That's the cannon. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by my live stream. I'm live every day on twitch.tv forward slash tribear. Come by and say hi. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.